A very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the 74th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. It is a special Hogmanay edition. It is the final hours of 2023 and I don't know about you but it's always a bit of a time to reflect on the year that's just gone and even previous years to that. And I just wanted to start off today's video on a slightly different note. Since we are about the end 2023 and step into a new year once again i wanted to say that um you know over recent years uh, has been quite challenging i have to say um there has been um you know heartache in recent years in my life but i've got to say that 2023 has been very very good to me uh, personally um i got married on the 29th of april to my beautiful wife lindsay and I just wanted to say to her through this video and, you know, share with everybody that I'm very, very grateful for the, the kind person that she is, the patient person that she is. She needs to be uh, rather patient to, to put up with me, I think. And uh, I'm very, very grateful, very fortunate to have her in my life and spend the rest of our life together. And um, I know that there is people out there that will probably want to see the back of this year. And I'm mindful of that as well. But I just want to say that I'm grateful for what 2023 has brought me. And um, hopefully in the years to come, we can enjoy life together, uh, health and happiness. And um, yeah, uh, I just wanted to share that little piece with you first before we get into today's video. So be sure to like, share with your friends and family and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. I want to wish everybody a very happy new year when the time comes, wherever you are in the world. I hope that 2024 brings health and happiness to yourself. And I'm also very grateful indeed for the tremendous support that I've received over the last 12 months and in the, in the years going by as well. Um, so the channel, of course, started back in 2012, in June of that year, and it has been uh, growing. Well, the website has uh, has been since 2012, at least anyway. The YouTube channel has been around since 2010, and uh, in recent years it has really exploded in terms of growth. So I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody for their support on the channel so let's get into the weather what can we expect from the upcoming 30-day period so this is the period between the 30th of december and 29th of january this is the gfs this is the extended ensemble and the 500 millibar geo potential heights you can see we've got higher pressure over the north atlantic greenland iceland over alaska We've got a negative across the west, southern United States, uh, displaced to the south, if you notice here, and into the UK and Ireland. But we've got a block, a negative NAO AO signal for the upcoming 30-day period. Now, as we look at the ECMWF, this is the extended ensemble. Now, this is an interest, and this is the control run for the next 30 days. And you can see it's a little bit different to, to what the... the GEFS and Sombom uh, showed. So the negative NAO signal here, the uh, displaced jet, and uh, that looks to me like a, a fairly cold signal. This, on the other hand, would be quite different. We've got a block, and yeah, over the North Atlantic, up into southern Greenland and Iceland, but we've also got uh, positive heights extending from the Canaries in northwest Africa up through Iberia, France, and into the UK and Ireland here. So that necessarily wouldn't necessarily bode particularly great with regards to the um, the upcoming 30-day period for cold weather lovers anyway. This is the ECMWF Extended Ensemble, and uh, you can see that this is more favourable. Like the GEFS, which you can see here, we've got a rather conducive-looking upper er, pattern for the next 30 days. North Atlantic Oscillation looks negative. Arctic Oscillation also negative the trough over the southern united states and also over the, uh, the uk and ireland here so that is a, a reasonably cold signal as we go through the period actually if we look at uh, what the uh, model is indicating for 
30 day period. So this is the uh, temperatures. So, so this is the surface temperature and only look at Scandinavia and Northwestern Russia here, bitterly cold conditions for the upcoming 30 days of this model. And that would go with what we've seen October, November and December has all been very cold across Scandinavia. And it looks as if January will follow in the October to December um trend here looking at europe in particular and that is a fairly chilly looking next 30 days across the uk ireland and particularly so across the north of europe here so let's have a look and see what the the, the two meter temperature normally has been like for the last 30 or so days here so this is the period taking us up to sunday the 31st of december and we had a fairly cold greenland so we had a fairly positive NAO signal here, especially the middle and second half of December after what was a, a fairly cold opening week to the month of December. North America, very, very mild compared to average here. Parts uh, of uh, the majority of northern South America has been above normal, uh, cold and average across, say, uh, Argentina. The majority of Australia has been above normal during the month of December up through Indonesia, Malaysia. Um, into the southeast of Asia, most of India, the Middle East, Central Asia has been um, above average temperature wise. Good swathe of Africa has actually seen below average temperatures away from the far north and northeast here, equatorial and northwestern Africa. Inland areas has been colder than average here, as you can see. Most of Europe, Central and Southern Europe, has been warmer than average, as you can see. Um, but interesting enough, Mongolia, southern portions of Siberia, northern portions of uh, China has been cold than average. That southwestern corner, I did contact Jim Yang based in Amoy in China, asking him why has it been uh, cold for the majority of the year in southwestern China. And he says that there has been exceptional amounts of rainfall in this vicinity of the country and with the rain it comes milder conditions or colder conditions in fact northern portions of a uh, far northern um, asia has been uh, warmer than average as you can see here the arctic region warmer than average and like i say temperatures down as low as minus 59 celsius in greenland here um uh, we've seen a cold than average july overall so how has the overall month panned out with regards to the data and what it suggests now according to maximiliano herrera extreme temperatures around the world always well worth checking him out and if you don't if you're on twitter you're interested in um, statistics and uh, you know climatology around the world this is the guy to follow but he says that december 2023 globally according to the preliminary data by the jra 55 shows a temperature normally of plus 0 0.76 celsius versus the 91 to 2020 uh, average which is nearly the same as november and once again scandinavia was the most below average con uh, region so norway sweden and finland all being similar while canada was the most above average for the month generally speaking so at this step globally december 2023 will be the seventh consecutive uh, month where it was a record warm global temperature anomaly here so uh, that warm trend continues whether you like it or not the El Nino the Tonga Hunga volcanic eruption back uh, a year past in January is possibly all contributors to this uh, you know remarkable spike in the global temperature whether it be the oceans the land or the atmosphere this is for Europe and you can see after that very cold start to the month we have seen a warming trend that has uh, pushed it over to the warmer side of, the, of average across Ireland, Northern Ireland, Southern Scotland, and all of England and Wales here. Scandinavia, like I say, continues that uh, that cold trend, which is, is, is rather interesting actually to see. So if we look at, uh, this is December, this is November, this is the, um, uh, September, uh, October, should I say, sorry, you have to go back to September for the last time that this region was warmer than average, which is quite interesting, actually, when you look at that. This is an interesting tweet here by Mika Rantanen. 
uh, based in Helsinki. Helsinki is now seen. So this is going back to the 15th of December. And he says that the, this was an interesting piece of imp information that I meant to share with you in, in the last week's uh, Global Weather Report. Helsinki is now seen a below average below zero sorry below zero temperature for an impressive 21 consecutive days i.e since the 25th of november this long frosty spell will be broken tomorrow such a long period of frost this early in the winter is very unusual in another tweet the october november combined was the second coldest such period in finland in this century only october and the through november 2002 was colder in the last century however such cold spills were much more common which i thought was quite interesting and then the cold that would be quite interested to find out um were the october to december period falls with regards to the cold over scandinavia i would be quite interested to find that out but it's interesting that it's been um so significantly cold and so persistently cold for a period of several months here. Um, a, another interesting tweet here by World Climate Service uh, shows cold has been remarkable in Northern Europe since October. Interestingly, October, December cold in Finland is much more common during La Nina, but 2002 it was uh, exceptionally cold and it was also an El Nino winter. Highlights for the rest of winter 0203 were with the Southern Stratospheric Warming on January 18th and the US East Coast blizzard here. So let me know in the comment section below what you think. Do you live in Scandinavia? Have you thought it's been exceptionally cold? Where you are, I would be curious to know your thoughts on that. So here's the area fraction of Northern Hemispheric 850 temperature cold pool. It looks as if, according to the World Climate Service, not much colder around to finish the year in the Northern Hemisphere. The 850 millibar area of minus 5 Celsius. The cold pool is the lowest on record. The highest on record for, this, uh, for the date was in 1984, a few weeks ahead of the enormous January 85 US cold outbreak. Uh, World Climate Service being based in the United States. So uh, I thought that was quite interesting. We're starting off. Um, our end in 2023 on a rather, uh, a rather, on, uh, not particularly cold. That's probably the best way to put it. Actually, so the, the this is our tweet here. The 60 north zonal wind forecast from last night's ECM, uh, 46 model showing the deceleration associated with the impending likely sun stratified warming. Now the models have backed off the reversal in the mean zone of winds, which constitutes a major SSW, by the way, weaker than normal westerlies propagate down in the late January, as expected. No model bias correction in this example. Now, we'll watch and look at the sudden stratospheric warming situation in the next video. Hopefully, I will have a video tomorrow, by the way, so stay tuned for that. So let's finally look and see what's been going on around the world in the last week or so here. Um, we've seen some remarkable cold in parts of eastern China, for example. Temperatures in Beijing began uh, to drop below zero uh, Celsius, and it lingered for the longest period of 327 consecutive hours, setting a record for the longest period uh, for the month of December in Beijing, the Chinese capital. We've also had some remarkable warmth across many parts of the world in the last week or so also christmas was the greenest ever recorded in canada and um, so very very little in the way of snow but no surprise given how much warmth we've seen during the month of december across say uh, the north american continent according to our friend thierry goose a marble bar in western australia recorded a temperature of 49.3 celsius an all-time record tied uh, that was back on the 27th of December 2018, only 0 0.6 from the December national record and only 0 0.5 Celsius from the December record for Western Australia. This ties the highest temperature in 2023 in the Southern Hemisphere. That day, uh, 49.5 Celsius, by the way, was the third highest December temperature ever recorded anywhere in the world. So I thought that was also quite an interesting stat. 
Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you hopefully again tomorrow with more. Have a great new year. Bye for now.